Welcome back, bread friends. It's me, Ellen, your crazy baker chick, and I have a new recipe for you. Oh, I was doing the hands like uh, Steve Martin on Saturday Night Live. I am a wild and crazy guy. Anyway, some of you will know that. Some of you will go, huh? Uh, before I start with the recipe, I have a couple of, um, I don't know, business or announcements or whatever. It has come up that I don't say the ingredients amounts in my videos. And the reason I do not say the ingredient amounts in my videos is because when I watch cooking videos and they are announcing the ingredients, I am frantically trying to scribble them down instead of watching the video, learning the technique, watching what to do. So I've been refraining from doing that, but a lot of people are asking me to, so I will say them quickly as I'm putting them in, but I will not take a long time because to get the recipe with the ingredients and all the other instructions, all you have to do is if you see the video on your screen like this, underneath it, look for a description. And usually you have to click on the word more. As soon as you click on the word more, there's one click and it takes you to my website. You don't have to search for anything. It opens the recipe right away. The recipe is in PDF format. It is beautiful. It has my picture on it but it's beautifully formatted. You can view it, you can download it, and you can print it. So that is why I have not been saying the ingredients, but some of you want it, so I'm going to try to remember to do that. And the other thing is, I want you to know, in case you don't, because some of you don't know, and some of you may be new to me today, I do not monetize my YouTube. I don't make money from my YouTube. I, I could, but I choose not to, because I'm retired, and I don't want a job, I want to have fun. So I just don't. And I don't make money from my website. So when you do click on the link to go to my website, there are no ads. There are no ads on my YouTube that I have allowed put on. Maybe YouTube puts them on, I have no control over that. But I do not monetize either my YouTube or my website, no ads. And anything I recommend to you, such as King Arthur flour or a scale, or the yeast that I use, they do not sponsor me. I turn them down. I get offers to, to be sponsored and get paid to use people's things, you know, cooking things, um, gloves or yeast or whatever it is. I don't do it because I do not want to be bound to recommending something. Maybe I'll find something better and I'm gonna use that. So I do not make money in any way, shape or form doing this, okay? All right. Done. Now, after all that big speech, I need a drink of water. All right, now on with the show. Today, I have a new recipe to share and it is peanut butter bread. And yes, it actually has peanut butter in it, not peanut butter powder. I've never tried that powder. I know some people use it, actual peanut butter. Um, it can be pretty much any, I would say natural peanut butter. It shouldn't have anything in it, but peanuts, and salt, salted peanut butter. Um, you do not have to use this kind. This is the kind I use because this is, believe it or not, peanut butter that is made in a tree nut free factory because I am allergic to tree nuts. It took me a long time because I love peanut butter. It took me a long time to find a safe peanut butter again. So don't use anything that has sugar. Um, just use any kind of a natural peanut butter the only ingredient should be peanuts. And of course the oil that's in there from the peanuts that separates and salt. That's it, nothing else, natural peanut butter. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you the ingredients as I go and I might forget, but I'm going to try because I'm not used to doing this. I have half and half, half and half for you people who don't live in this country in the United States is half milk, half cream and it, comes in a carton like this. And you don't have to use it. You can just use whole milk. The reason I use half and half is because I'm not a good planner. I ha would have to buy milk to have in the house. This is what we use for my husband's coffee. So 360 grams of half and half. And the next ingredient is the peanut butter. I have already 
weighed out my peanut butter and it is 125 grams. I sprayed a little nonstick spray. It's not gonna help completely. You know how sticky peanut butter is. Peanut butter, I am counting as a wet ingredient. Scrape your bowl as best you can. Yeah, it's so gooey. <laughs> All right. That's probably about the best I can do. And the next ingredient is 30 grams of grapeseed oil, which I've already poured in here. And I want to talk really quickly about the oil because I always get questions. You don't have to use grapeseed oil, but you do have to use a neutral oil, meaning it has no real taste or flavor. Don't use olive oil for baking. It's, it loses all its nutrients. It's really meant, as my registered dietitian told me, as a topping. She said, don't cook with it. Use it to put on your pasta or put to put on your salad. You need a neutral oil, vegetable oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, anything that doesn't have a distinct taste or smell. So I've already poured in my 30 grams of grapeseed oil, but now I've got to add 40 grams of honey. So 30 grams of grapeseed oil, 40 grams of honey. And the reason I didn't pour the honey in yet is that I pour it into the grapeseed oil. So I would put the grapeseed oil in first if I'm just cooking by myself. And then I would put the honey right in. But since we were video, I didn't want to put it in ahead of time. So what did I say? 30 grams of grapeseed oil. Now I need 40 grams of honey. So I've hit the tear button. It's on zero. And I'm going to squeeze in 40 grams. Okay. Got to slow down. Ah, there we go. One-tenth extra won't hurt anything. And then I'm just going to get it in there. And if you pour the honey into the oil, it comes out better. There's hardly anything to scrape. It's all out. Just making sure. Okay. If you're not using oil in a recipe, you can spray a little cup with nonstick spray. The oil works better, though, for the honey. So now I have my ingredients my wet ingredients. And now I'm going to put in my flour, 540 grams of King Arthur bread flour. I'm gonna move the bread pan over. Don't need the scale anymore because I've weighed everything else. And what I am gonna do is just barely graze the top and spread it out a little bit. All right. And then I have my salt, seven grams of salt. That's in there. And the last ingredient is yeast. And I have seven grams of yeast. So I'm gonna make that little well, pour it in. That's all my ingredients. I'm going to use the dough course because I prefer to bake my bread in the oven but you can absolutely positively bake this bread all the way through in your bread machine and you would use your white or basic and it is a two pound recipe. So if you have a Zo Virtuoso Plus like me, you would use course one, but I'm going to use dough. So going over here to the bread machine. to find the right cord. There are three of them. <laughs> and I'm going to set it for dough, which is course 11. Press start and immediately set a timer for 28 minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for 28 minutes. My Siri's been really slow lately. It's just sitting there. Well, I'll use this one as a backup. 28 minutes. Whoops. Ah. I'm going to explain why I said now it's going to be only 27 minutes. 
So 28 minutes when I use the dough course in my kitchen with my Southern California climate, the rest period, because right now it will say rest on there. A rest is a pre-warming. It pre-warms my ingredients, which means that I do not warm up my, my milk. I don't have to put eggs out at room temperature. I don't have to soften butter, whatever. Cold ingredients right from, right from the fridge because my bread machine has that rest time. If your machine does not have that rest time, you need to warm your liquid, just a little bit lukewarm, not hot, never hot. And you need to have certain things at room temperature like butter and egg or anything else that's cold. Anyway, getting back to the 28 minutes, my bread machine has a rest or a pre-warm for 23 minutes. And then I add five minutes onto that. 23 plus five is 28. And that is the time that I will check my dough for its consistency, five minutes into the kneading process. So if you press start and your bread machine starts <laughs> kneading right away, then you need to pre-warm at your ingredients and then you will set a timer for only five minutes because you want to check your dough five minutes into the kneading process to make sure it is not too wet or too dry. You must do this every single time if you want to have successful loaves. I know it's so tempting to use that delay cycle that's built into the machine and set it and have it ready in the morning and sometimes it will be perfect and sometimes you will be disappointed. So the checking the dough consistency is your insurance policy. And then you choose whether you're always going to do it, but I suggest you do. So I never make my dough on, on my bread on delay. I'm going to wait. We're gonna turn off the camera and I'm going to come back and I'm gonna show you how I'm checking the dough consistency and if I need to add flour or liquid. See you in a bit. Okay, it's time to check the dough. It's been 28 minutes, which is the rest of 23 minutes and the five minutes of kneading. And it's very obvious that this dough is a little too dry. Not a lot. So I only, I don't measure what I put in, but look, I only put in, maybe that was a tablespoon. Then we're gonna give it a minute then I'll turn the camera back on. So I let it knead for another minute or so, and now I'm going to touch it, and it is tacky. Before, it, it was soft, but it didn't have any, like, you can even hear that, right? Stick to it. So now it has a nice stick to it. I'm actually debating whether to add a little bit more liquid. I'm gonna give it another minute. By the way, another reason not to add the ingredients in the bread video is be, is because sometimes I end up changing it. Like for example, with my um, brown bread, my pumpernickel and brown bread recipe, um, after it was on the on on YouTube for a long time, I realized that I thought it was just a little too bitter from too much molasses, and so I took out some molasses and added some honey or some more honey, I don't remember, in. So I actually changed the recipe and then I change it in the actual PDF of the recipe. But if you only watch the video and write down the ingredients, you won't have those changes. So that's another really good reason for me not to give the ingredients. <laughs> but you wanted them. <laughs> Even if you write down the ingredients, my friends, please take a quick peek at the PDF. You don't have to go searching through anything. It's one click on the description and then one click to the video link and it and it's nicely formatted you can just print it out some people may not want to do that but at least make sure that the ingredients i gave you in the video are the same as what i have in the recipe let's go look at that dough i gotta turn it off and switch okay. the camera so yeah this looks good we're gonna leave it alone so I know it doesn't matter when you're watching, but it's 9.52 a.m. This will be done at 11.09 a.m. The, the dough will be done, not the bread. I did want to show you that it has formed a pretty nice smooth dough ball. Not completely. 
the peanut butter is a very drying ingredient. I mean, even though we think of it as being wet and sticky, the peanut butter was really challenging to bake with. Kept adding more liquid and more liquid and more liquid and more liquid and more liquid. So if you look at this recipe and you think, Ellen, is that a typo? No, it is not. And you can see that I needed to add even a little bit more. So just wanted to explain see? that. Nice and smooth. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna let it go. Turn the camera. <laughs> no, don't turn the camera that way. <laughs> We're just being silly here. I just wanna show you, I know you've seen me do it before, but maybe you're new to my channel. This is how I prep the loaf pan. Oh, and people always ask me, this is a Williams Sonoma gold touch loaf pan. They call it a one and a half pound um, capacity loaf pan, but I use it with all my two pound recipes. I do like to have a nice dome or muffin top or whatever you want to call it. So this is how I do it. I have my nonstick canola oil spray. For William Sonoma, do not use Pam brand nonstick spray. It has some kind of chemical in it that will destroy the finish. They told me it when I bought it. I just use this. This is from Costco. You can use oil, you can use whatever. So I spray the heck out of it because we don't want anything sticking, right? I'm gonna spray it really, really well, especially the corners. And then my videographer is gonna walk behind me and I'm gonna show you the next part. And I will turn. Did you notice the artistry and grace of that dance? <laughs> so now we have a well-sprayed loaf pan and this is what I do. You don't have to. You don't have to do this. It's, I know you're gonna, some of you will think, oh, that's a waste, but I don't care because this makes life easier. I'm gonna take this parchment and lay it on top pretty evenly. I'm not being too super picky about it. And then I'm gonna take my fingers and go like this. And, I, and the, the nonstick spray will cover the areas that doesn't have parchment, but also the nonstick spray also helps the parchment kind of lay down. The sides have that little wrinkly part. It's not gonna hurt anything, I promise. Give you that view, okay? And some people will call this a sling. And when I take the bread out of here, you'll see why. Basically, I'll have when I take the loaf of bread out of the oven, I will have a hot pad here and I will have a cooling rack and it'll just lift out with the parchment. Otherwise, you have to pick up the bread pan with your oven mitts and kind of turn it over or slide it out onto the rack. That's my dishwasher running. <laughs> and, um, and it's, you can like drop the loaf of bread. It can go bouncing off. You can, it'll, you can um, get the rack marks on the top of the loaf. This is just so easy because all I'll have to do is lift it out. So this is what I do. All right, um, the bread has been rising and it just got knocked down. So it's been through one rise and then it's just gone bloom, bloom, bloom and kind of deflated it. And now it's gonna do its final rise or it's second rise, I should say, or second part of the rise. And there are 20 minutes left. And then my dough cycle will be complete and we'll be back and we'll show you what's next. Hi there. So the dough course just finished. It wouldn't be this fast if I had baked in the bread machine. It would need like another, I think, hour or so. So if you have this machine, and I also believe if you had the Home Bakery Supreme, you do not leave this machine turned on. When your course finishes, whatever you use, you always press the cancel button and you always unplug it. First of all, there's no reason to use electricity when you don't need to. Hello, electricity is expensive. But also, they have an internal clock. So even if the screen is blank, the clock has a battery. Maybe it recharges when you plug it in. Maybe it's just a battery, I don't know. I've never ever had it go out. I had the Home Bakery Supreme for 20 years. The clock never went out on me or anything like that. So always press cancel and unplug. 
There's no reason to keep it plugged in whatsoever. So now I am coming over here, dumping it out. First thing I'm gonna do, since it's dough, it's easy, is to take the paddles out. You can see how greasy this dough is because of the peanut butter and a little bit of the oil. Before you do anything else, you put a little dish soap into your pan, put a little water in the bottom. You don't really need to fill it, but just I always just fill it a couple inches so it's above the spindles. And the spindles are what I call the thing that the paddles go on. If you baked in it, all the more reason to get water in there immediately. And if you have baked in it, you put some water in, you wait maybe five minutes, <coughs> excuse me, and you put your, I'm, I don't, if I'm simulating this, but you put your fingers in there after you can, don't burn your forearms on the edges. So wait a few minutes till it cools and you put your hands in and sort of wiggle jiggle your paddles and then pull upward and eventually you will get them out. You want to do that right away because it can be, they can get sort of cemented in if you wait. So you want to make sure that as soon as you dump your bread or dough out, you put water in it and dish soap. And if it's hot, wait a few minutes till you can touch it and not burn yourself right here. Wiggle jiggle the paddles and then just lay them in there until you're going to wash the bread pan. Always only wash the inside of the bread pan and the handles. If you get a little water on the sides, that's fine. You can wipe them, but you never ever want to get, and I can't really tip it too much, but you never want to get that bottom part wet. So don't put it in the dishwasher. Don't even put it in the sink where it's wet. I turn it on the side over here on, on this side. If you don't have a middle section, you can do it over here. And I turn it on its side and I hold it and then I wash the inside and then I kind of flip it over and wash it on the other side to make sure I didn't miss anything. So don't let the kids or anyone who, who haven't instructed how to wash this bread pan. All right, so back to the dough. By the way, you can really smell the peanut butter. It smells amazing. It is a beautiful, pliable, soft dough. Now in my earlier videos, I didn't do this but I started doing what I'm about to show you. I know this is really goofy. Take out your aggressions. I'm just trying to get rid of any air pockets that might be in there because air pockets make holes. A little tiny hole is not gonna hurt anything. It's cosmetic, it's not a big deal, but you know, we want our breads to be pretty. Obviously you cannot do that if you are baking the bread in the bread machine and that's perfectly okay. So now I've been doing this. I didn't do this in the beginning, so you may not see me do this. I fold it over, fold it over and kind of press in. I'm gonna fold again, see little bits of peanut, fold again. And then I'm just gonna kind of roll a little, squeeze a little, it's fun. The dough feels wonderful. Roll a little, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna kind of pinch, smooth, make sure the sides are smooth. You don't really have to do this, my friends. It's just kind of my newer thing to do. And I'm gonna kind of roll it again to make it even smoother and I'm kind of patting it. And I'll just pinch that again. Some doughs are, if it's greasier like this, it will kind of resist me doing that. So the ends may not be as pretty, but we'll see. All right, I'm done fussing and I'm just gonna put it in here. And I kind of press it down like that. I'm going to get the grease off my fingers and my hands really fast. Because that is an oily, oily dough. So 
So you have two ways of letting your dough do a final rise. Um, you can, if your kitchen is very warm, like 75 degrees, 80 degrees, which most of our kitchens wouldn't be in February, but if it was, you could cover it and leave it out. But what I do, I do one of two things. I have a countertop oven that has a proof. And if I set it to proof, and I just want to, I'm not going to use it, but if I set it to proof, you can see that it sets itself at 85 degrees. So that is approximately the temperature that is ideal for proofing. But for today, I'm going to show you the other thing that I do. We're going to walk over to my oven. And I'm going to make sure first that my rack is in the right place, one lower than middle, because the bread gets pretty tall. So what I do, my oven is older. We remodeled our kitchen in what, 2003 or four, something like that. And I don't have a proof on my oven, but that's fine, I don't need it. I set it to its lowest temperature, which happens to be 170 and I turn it on, and then I set a timer for one minute. Do not forget to set the timer. It's weird how we don't see it blink when I look at the oven, but it blinks when you take a video of it. The reason I'm setting it for one minute is because we are not heating the oven all the way to 170. Do you remember how I showed you that the proofing temperature on my Breville was 85 degrees? That is the perfect temperature for proofing. So we don't want this to be 170. You'll kill the yeast and it will not rise. Bread ruined, or probably mostly ruined. So if I set it at the lowest temperature my oven goes to, yours may differ, for only one minute, it's just warm enough. So I have 15 seconds left. If you don't set a timer, I guarantee you're not gonna remember, and then your oven will be too hot and you can't proof in it. Don't make that mistake. Set the timer. Three, two, one, and the timer's up. I'm going to cancel the timer and I'm turning off the oven. Now, some people turn on their oven light bulb and take the warmth from there for an hour, but that uses electricity and you're gonna burn out your light bulb. If you wanna do that, if that works for you, I don't care, you do you, do you. but this is using one minute only one minute of electricity, period, end of story. Just one minute. So I'm gonna put the dough in here. I'm gonna close my oven and I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes. Now, the bread will very unlikely be done in 30 minutes, but at the 30 minute time, I'm going to check it because I have this beautiful piece of aluminum foil waiting. And at about 30 minutes, this bread is going to be, I'm sorry, I'm totally screwing up. Rewind. Ellen is crazy. I have a lot of stress right now. My dad is very sick and I'm not with it. Backwards. We're letting it rise for 40 minutes. I'm so sorry. So I'm setting this timer for 40 minutes. I totally messed up. I'm not, I'm surprised I didn't mess up something else and maybe I did. 40 minutes for rising. It actually needs about 45 minutes for rising, but when I take the bread out, I'm going to egg wash it. And by the time the oven heats, it'll be that extra five or six minutes. Sorry about that, people. My mind is really crazy. I don't know why my husband didn't stop me. Anyway, it's rising right now. Not baking, so sorry. Let's turn off the phone so I can regroup my brain. We've got 11 minutes and change left for rising, but I wanted to show you how beautiful it's rising. More later. We're back. I want you to see the beauty of the risen loaf of bread. And if I smell it, 
The smell of peanut butter is definitely there. You will taste and smell the peanut butter and it is just beautiful. It is not a strong flavor. It is just the perfect amount. I tried to put more peanut butter in just by the way, in case you ask me or think about asking me. And it, even though it's like a wet gooey ingredient, it is very drying. It sucks up a lot of the liquid, which is why I explained earlier, I used so much liquid in it and had to add more. So right now I'm going to make the egg wash. Usually don't talk that much about the egg wash, even though I almost always do it. But I have one egg. I'm gonna rinse my fingers off. And I pour in a little bit of water. I mean, I barely have anything in here. It's just, a, I don't even, not even gonna use all that. Maybe a teaspoonful. It's really not crucial. I'm gonna beat this up, break up the yolk. I just do it right with the um, silicone brush that I'm going to do it with. And King Arthur says to use a pinch of salt, and I've been doing that. So I would consider that a pinch, putting that in there. I know that some of you were gonna write to me and say, you know that there are measuring spoons that have a pinch. <laughs> I know. It's not crucial enough for me to get those out and make a measuring spoon dirty. I do have those. So I'm just going to beat this up a bit. Now, if I had some peanuts that I would chop, I think it would be fun to put them on top. I don't. It's very, very hard for me to find tree nut free peanuts because they always make the nuts in the same factory. So you could be creative because if you're not allergic to tree nuts, you might be able to get some peanuts and chop them up and maybe put them on top. I don't know how it would even work or if they would burn. I have no idea. This egg wash is 100% optional. It just tends to make the top a beautiful, beautiful golden brown color. And also, if you want to add toppings, like those chopped peanuts, or if you want to make it sweeter and add, I don't know, some sugar or honey on top, could actually do that. It might be yummy, but I'm not going to this time. So I'm just making sure. And notice that I'm using a silicone brush. Yes, I just splashed on my counter. Um, the reason I use silicone instead of the old fashioned like straw bristle pastry brush is because those are a little rougher on the dough and can deflate it. I know some of you have told me that your dough deflates. I've never had dough deflate using it. And I don't know, I'm, I'm using an extremely light touch. I'm just grazing. Is that the right word? <laughs> very, very, very light. And, and I didn't really mean to do two coats. It's not gonna really hurt. It's probably just gonna run off actually onto the parchment. But I'm just, it's a very, very gentle glide across the dough. And that's it. I have set my oven for 350 degrees and a lot of people ask me, because sometimes I guess I forget to say to put it in the recipe. Any bread that is all white flour or mostly white flour, like bread flour, I bake at 350 degrees. I set a timer for about 25, 30 minutes. I check the loaf because often by then the top is brown, but it's not done on the inside. I'm gonna show you a little bit later how you tell if the Bread is done by using an instant read probe thermometer. All right, I'm just waiting for the oven to heat. And when it does, I'm gonna pop it in there and I will show you along the way when it's baking, what's going on. My 30 minute timer just went off. So I'm gonna check the bread. All right, so it is an absolutely gorgeous, shiny brown bread, but I know that it is not cooked on the inside. So. I'm gonna put a piece of foil. Let's hope I don't burn myself while I'm doing this at the same time I'm videoing. And you just kind of lay it on top. 
that's it. And I will set another timer for 10 minutes and check the temperature then. All right, so I'm going to grab the foil, pull this out a bit. Isn't that pretty? And then it smells. Wish you were here, smell a vision. I'm gonna check the temperature. It is at 190, so it maybe needs five to seven minutes. So I'm gonna cover it back up. Oops, close the oven and we'll turn off the camera. And then for you, it'll be just a second. For me, it'll be five minutes. <laughs> All right, we're gonna check one last time and I am pretty sure we're going to be at a good temp. Yep, over 200. We are ready to go. Get rid of the foil. Get my other mitt on. And get this beautiful baby out of here. My videographer will get a nice close look at that pretty, pretty loaf. I'm just turning off the oven and removing my oven mitts. Okay. Hi, beautiful. Oh, it smells so good. And look how shiny and pretty the top is from the egg wash. You don't have to use the egg wash. It'll just be more of a matte finish. Now I'm going to show you the beauty of the parchment. I go through a lot of parchment. Ready? It's not, it's warm, but it's not hot. I pick it up. Ta-da! <laughs> and then you can wait a few minutes. If you're sensitive to heat like my, I am, you can wait a few minutes and then just hold on and slide the bread off. I'll probably do it now. It is hot. But it won't hurt it. Sorry for the crackling. It won't hurt it to sit on the parchment to cool. So that is the picture of the bread. I need it to cool for about three hours. So I'm gonna go visit my daddy and leave this cooling for three hours. And when I come back, we will slice it and I will show you what the inside crumb looks like. Okay, but look at that beautiful loaf. Yay! You know, I've baked, I don't even how many, I wish I had kept tally marks on how many loaves I made from the very beginning. But when they turn out this beautiful, I'm still excited. <laughs> and I know most of you are too when you get a really, really pretty one. And you know what? Sometimes they're not quite as pretty. If they taste good and they have a nice texture, it's not really a big deal. But this turned out really pretty, so we'll see you in a bit. The time has come, we get to cut the bread, yay! And I wanted to show you my knife. This brand is Sock and um, it's all glary. I don't know if you can read the name. But anyway, S-A-K-E-N. It's a serrated bread knife. Uh, my husband got for me for a gift from Amazon. It has a really nice weight. The grip is really nice and no i am not sponsored by them i told you before no sponsors anyway socken s-a-k-e-n serrated bread knife from Am from amazon we tried an electric knife it didn't work anywhere near as well as this and also sometimes i use an electric slicer but right now i'm not going to i'm going to cut the end it's been cooling for over two hours Ta-da! Shall I lift it up? It's very, very, very soft. Because it has all that yummy half and half in there. And when you use milk, or milk and eggs, or even water and eggs, that and bread flour, of course, you get a softer loaf.
Funny, it smells like peanut butter. <laughs> I'm not going to taste it in front of you because every time I do that, I have a big gob of bread in my mouth. No, I'm, and I'm trying to talk to you. I know what it tastes like because obviously I've made it before. This is one of those recipes that took me about seven tries to get the recipe right. And it was because I put too much peanut butter in and the peanut butter somehow sucked all the moisture away. It was very, even though it's wet and gooey, it's drying somehow, sucks hydration. I don't know what the scientific term, but this can be used as a sandwich bread. You can have toast. You could put peanut butter bread with jelly. I had that the other day. I would say the peanut butter taste is not strong, but you can taste it and it's delicate and it's absolutely wonderful. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, don't forget that right under the description, right under the video, if you have the page open on YouTube and there, the video is like this, underneath you'll find the description. You usually have to click the word more. The whole thing opens up right there, link to the PDF of the recipe. Okay. All right, thank you for watching.